Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about Hades and Persephone. So this is an unsponsored video, obviously none of my videos are sponsored, but if you want to sponsor me, go for it. But we are going to be talking about this bad boy here. So this is called Law Olympus and this is by Rachel Smythe and she does a comic every single Saturday on Webtoon, although she's taking a break at the moment, but go on there, check it out, she's amazing. So this is volume one, so what she's done is she's put all of her comic into a book, volume two is out at the end of this year I believe, July, or was it November? So that's out this year basically, and I'm so 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 excited about. Um, this is so good, it's literally the same as the comic online, but the only reason I'm showing you about this now is because it's Hades and Persephone so I wanted you to kind of understand a little bit more about my love for them so this is a comic where it's based sort of like in a modern sort of setting they've got phones they've got technology and everything but it's still based in ancient Greece so when they go back to ancient Greece in the book for certain reasons it's still very much wearing the old time outfits whereas most of the outfits they wear are modern so it is set in like a modern based kind of thing it's not just about Persephone and Hades it does have other gods and goddesses in there and things that are going on with them um but it is obviously based on them about how they met um not all of it is based on truth there's a lot of it that isn't um but it's a story at the end of the day but other than that the idea and the reason behind it for Persephone and Hades being together is all legit, it's all real. Um, a lot of the characters in it, although their stories have changed, they're all real. There's no one in here that is a brand new character or anything like that. Um, so I'm going to read you the back quickly just so you can know what it's about because you guys need to check this out. So witness what the gods do after dark in a stylish and contemporary um, reimagining of one of the mythology's best known stories from the creator of Rachel Smythe. Persephone, a young goddess of spring, is new to Olympus. Her mother is Dementor, who reigns to turn the mortal round, but after Persephone promises to train as a sacred virgin, she allows her to live in the fast-moving, glamorous world of the gods. When her roommate Artemis takes her to a party, her entire life changes. She ends up meeting Hades and feels an immediate spark with the charming yet misunderstood ruler of the underworld. Now, Persephone must navigate the confusing politics and relationships that rule Olympus, whilst also figuring out her own place and her own power. So, again, it's about Persephone and Hades, about their love, about how they meet. And Volume 2 is out this year, but Volume 2, and I believe... If you're doing it in volumes, the third one is already out on her um, comics. So go check it out. You probably have to watch it all, read it all for free now um, because we're still waiting for the next one to come out. Okay, back to the video. Okay, so Hades. We're going to start off with Hades. We're going to go into a bit of Hades and Persephone and then we're going to end with Persephone leading back to Hades. So it's kind of going to be a big circle of Hades and Persephone love. Okay, so Hades is the god of the underworld. He is also god of wealth and king of the dead. Not to be mistaken with Thanos, Thanos, who is actually the one who goes and collects death, um, a bit like the Grim Reaper, whereas Hades is sort of just lord of the underworld domain. Okay, so his Roman name is Pluto. Again, planets, although Pluto is not a planet anymore apparently. See how uh, Hades gets forgotten about. Okay, so like his brothers Zeus and Poseidon, because again he is one of the 12 Olympians, but he is also one of the sacred six, who is son of Cronus. So Hades is one of the original Olympians, son of the Titans Cronus and Rhea. You might know him as the fiery villain from Disney's Hercules, Hercules, the love interest also in Rachel Smythe's The Olympus, um, two very different interpretations of the gods. So in Hercules, he's seen as this evil villain guy with blue hair and red hair and it's really evil. And he's also seen as a handsome devil in the Laura Olympus. Hades was a god of the dead and underworld, but he's not the god of death. This is what I'm trying to say. So Thanatos, um, he is the one who would go and do death. So he was not the god of death, um, but he was the god of wealth and riches. So one of his names would mean rich, so Dis was one of his little nicknames. 
um, which was also Roman and Latin. Hades had the Helmet of Invisibility, and that was made by Cyclopses during a war between the gods and the Titans. It sounds cool, but it doesn't really come up in mythology as much. So basically, when he would put it on a little bit like um, in superhero films, he would pop it on and become invisible. So it was something that the gods wanted and they feared because he could put it on literally be anywhere and they would have no idea where he was or what he was doing. He was the third brother in the Olympians and he drew his share from the underworld in a lot. Like we said with the straws, the biggest straw would get being king, which was obviously fixed by Zeus. The middle straw would get the sea and the sword the sawn the shortest one would get the underworld so rare that he would never leave the underworld um whether there was an actual reason or not he would usually just stay in the underworld with all of his people there um he very rarely went to olympus i suppose if there was like a big thing going on um then he would um which is why although he was one of the 12 olympians he wasn't always one of the 12 olympians because later on dionysus took his spot on the table but he was still a part of it he was still seen as an important member of Greek mythology and the gods and stuff but he was sort of forgotten about because he sort of stayed in his own room and then I personally think that was because he just hated Zeus so much um he was also not a welcome visitor he was unpitying inexorable but just this a terrible not an evil god so he wasn't very nice a lot of people didn't get along with him but I suppose if he didn't feel welcome and there was I mean I'm trying to justify things here because I like him but um, I can understand why he would perhaps not want to be up there with everyone, especially if they were causing problems and mischief and like doing problems with mortals and stuff. And he was not like that. I suppose he wouldn't really want to be a part of that. Um, his wife was Stephanie or Persephone or Kor, um, whoever whom he carried away from earth and made him his queen. He was king of the dead, not death himself, whom the Greek gods called Thanos and the Romans Orcus. So that's just a tiny bit about Hades. Um, there's not so much about him in the sense of like all of the affairs he would have because he'd never had affairs. There's not really information about all of the um, children that he had because it was believed that he couldn't have children, which is why him and Persephone never had any children. There are other mythology stories where they indicate that he did have children. Um, but from what I've learned as an overall, the only children he had was with Persephone through Zeus. <laughs> Again, gross. Because um, he thought she thought she was with Hades, but actually she was with Zeus, things like that. Um, that's why he didn't have children, because he couldn't have children. I suppose being Lord of the Underworld and being related to death, maybe that was an aspect of it. I, I don't know. Um, either way, he couldn't have children. Um, or if he did, they weren't necessarily Persephone's children. Underworld. The Underworld was sometimes known as the House of Hades. I love that. That's like a, a brand name, House of Hades. Though encountering Hades was unavoidable, even calling upon him by name was a frightening prospect. They called him things like the Lord of the Underworld. So it's a little bit like a Voldemort kind of thing. If you say Voldemort's, Voldemort's name, people will find you. If you say Hades' name, though, he will come and get you. And because was terrified of him and they feared him so much to call his name like maybe we're calling death i don't know what people believed back then um they were calling him the invisible one um the hateful he was impeccable implacable hades was not preyed upon or worshipped in any cult he did however have um a more being inside which was known as Pluto, wealthy one. He was a source of all God, good things risen from the earth. As Pluto, who was also worshipped along with his wife, Persephone, queen of the dead, and her mother, the goddess of Dementor. So I suppose if you called him Pluto, he was seen as like a better one? I don't know. Maybe it was something to do with the Romans and how they perceived the gods to be. In mythology, he was a son of the Titans Cronus and Rhea. His siblings were Zeus, Poseidon, Hester, Hera, and Dementor. When Cronus' children overpowered him, he had not yet been determined what part of the world each of the gods would take control of. In order to establish, the brothers drew lots from a helmet, um, and this was a way that Hades was awarded underworld in the realm of influence. I quite like my straw idea better. Given the nature of the god and his kingdom, it's not surprising that he took his bride, Persephone, by force, which we're going to get onto in a minute. Um, the adoption of his bride is his best known myth, so it's probably one of the biggest myths that we know about him. Um, I know that he was Lord of the Underworld, so that would be a big myth that he has, like things like that would, would play part with the fates um, and the furies and all of that, but it was, Persephone was his biggest myth. As identity was feared, um, there was less art of him, I suppose if you drew it badly he'd be offended, I don't know. In a fresco painting from um, 
this royal tomb, he's represented as a mature male with a full beard driving a chariot and wheeling Persephone in his arms. Sometimes he's also seen as holding a pomegranate or a scepter. So that's just another little bit about Hades. Okay, so we're going to go on to him and Persephone now before we go on to more about Persephone. There's a lot less information about her um, as opposed to him, but there's probably still a lot more about her than there is with Hades. Um, I don't know why, really. Okay, so Hades was married to Persephone, who was his niece <laughs> through his sister and his brother. I suppose the only thing I can say is back then there was very few uh, gods and goddesses with good power um, so you would kind of go to them to create more power and and so on a bit like the royal families and stuff they would marry cousins um, I know this is probably a bit more gross but I suppose that that was an excuse that was a reason whereas now in the world there are so many people um, so doing that would be seen as like really wrong and um, the orange of their story are tragic and awful though somehow they do end up um, well for good for the parties because they do get married and things do happen and Persephone actually created um, the good side of the underworld where you would go if you did good things um, paradise and peace um, whereas it was just darkness and torturous down there before she created that nice bit of light so even though it was a god of dead death and offered features of the villain um, Beyond his kidnapping for Persephone, he was actually one of the least troubling of the Olympian gods. Hades was faithful to his wife and they never seemed to grow out of love. Um, they respected each other and lived quite um, a good life with each other. I mean, I know that Persephone would then, which we'll talk about in a minute, um, would go and live with her mother for um, half of the year and half of the year she would stay with Hades. They did actually love each other and there is a romance there and it's probably one of the most truest romances of the whole of the Greek mythology world. Um, otherwise, he kept himself to himself, keeping track of those who died and causing little to no trouble among the other gods. His brother Zeus was far more dangerous and is often seen as Hades as a villain, but actually it was his brother. So while Hades was Lord of the Underworld, um, Heracles travelled once to steal his dog, um, Serbius, from, um, for a crazy crazy quest that he did um so he tried to kidnap Cerberus the underworld is also referred to as Tartarus although this word could mean both part of the underworld or the underworld as a whole and um, it's also described to be a place where internal punishments took place none of them necessarily were taken place by Hades he would help other people that would do that so Persephone how Hades met her and how they became the king and queen of the underworld so the kidnapping of Persephone and back in Greek mythology it was called other things but we'll just go by the kidnap of Persephone. So he first appeared before her in a field um, she'd been picking flowers peacefully um, with her friends and she strayed away from them and was left alone. She was distracted by a beautiful narcissist before her and suddenly the earth opened up before her and there was Hades, god of the death, king of the underworld. He grabbed Persephone, dragging her forcefully into his chariot, pulled by coal black horses. In an instant they were back beneath the earth, travelling to the underworld. The cry um, that she created when Hades grabbed her was brief and reached only the goddess Hecate, who told Persephone's mother. Dementor, who had then heard, Hades felt he had the right to appear by Persephone and take her by force because her father Zeus had given her perm him permission to marry her. Both Zeus and Hades knew that Dementor would never allow it so they didn't ask her and he just went and got her. So in his defence, if his brother's already given permission, that's why he went there. Dementor raged upon earth in search for her daughter and brought the whole of it to a standstill. Finally, she was able to convince Zeus to hand over Hades and relinquish Persephone. Though in order for Zeus, Persephone may have been able to leave the underworld, but she had eaten some pomegranates that um, Hades had given her. Having eaten the food of the underworld, she would have to spend one third of her time there with her new husband Hades, the one who kidnapped her, um, resulting in automatic marriage. She would then be able to spend the remaining third of the year with the other gods in Olympus with her mother, and then the rest of it would have to be with Hades down below. She would then um, be his wife and queen of the underworld. Um, some of the gods believe that this is why the seasons of the harvest existed. So when she would be with her mother, you would have spring and summer. And when she would be with Hades, you would have autumn and winter. Back then, they only really had like the three seasons. Um, 
so that's why it was a third of the year in stuff whereas like when it was cold that's when she would be with Hades but obviously as time has gone on um I believe she's made it so she can have more time with Hades down there so the story of the relationship of Hades and Persephone is often retold more romantically than it originally was which we'll get to in a second um but she literally did become queen of the underworld and helped with a lot of the punishments. So she was usually the one that would decide the way things would go, whereas Hades was a lot more in the background. He didn't really like have an involvement in that. So we have a few different other versions of it. They're probably very similar. So I'm just going to kind of go through them with you. And if there's anything that's different, then we can pick up on that. Stephanie is also known as Kor, which means maiden, because she was one of the virgin goddesses, along with Athena, Hester and um artemis <laughs> i can believe i forgot for a second um so she was the wife of hades and queen of undwell she was daughter of zeus and dementa who was goddess of grain and harvest as reaccounted in the so-called um homeromic to dementa hades fell in love with the lovely persephone and wished to marry her in accordance with a plan con conceived by zeus and executed with the help of earth gaia Hades took his bride by force. Gaius caused the meadows of the valley to bloom irresistibly with roses, um, which meant that Persephone was like, oh, what's this? She went over to pick those flowers and then Hades appeared out of nowhere. He seized her into his chariot, later plunging her into the depths of the earth and Dementor wandered the earth um, trying to find her. Um, but because the seeds didn't sprout and people started to starve and the gods did not receive their sacrifices because obviously the mortals would find things and sacrifice them to the gods and say here you are this is what i want blah 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 because they weren't getting any of that zeus had to then intervene so zeus and all the gods attempted to like make her feel better offering her wonderful gifts in order to help her to return to mount olympus but she said no she wanted her daughter back she wanted to know where she was um and then eventually hades agreed but he first tripped persephone like he agreed to give her back sorry um he eventually persuaded her to eat some pomegranate seeds which complied her to spend a portion of the year um with him because she ate them she had to come back to the underworld when persephone re-emerged in spring her mother rejoiced and the seeds began to sprout persephone was worshipped um in conjunction with her mother dement as a fertility and cultural deity so like a fertility goddess and was represented as a woman carrying torches and grains of um, stalks of grain and she would also have pomegranates and a beautiful crown where she would be the queen of the underworld so another kind of version that we have is where Persephone actually wanted to eat these pomegranates so she spent time with Hades down in the underworld and fell in love with him a little bit like a beauty and the beast kind of thing um, and she actually chose to eat the pomegranates so that she could at least spend a portion of her time with him um, because otherwise she would have to have returned back to her mother and that's kind of where we get from Laurel Olympus where she doesn't actually want to be with him um, although we don't know if she's eating the pomegranates um, at the moment so that's basically them and how they became king and queen of the underworld together and um, so a little bit about Persephone then so Persephone was the daughter of Dementa and Zeus and she was originally the daughter of spring and growth she had two names so she had Kor which meant maiden and she had Persephone which was used before Hades kidnapped her and after so usually she would be known as Kor because she was a maiden she was a young girl um, and virgin etc whereas when she married Hades that didn't really count anymore so she became Persephone bring all the death um, <laughs> after the kidnap she took the name Persephone which meant to destroy to bring death so she literally embraced the queen of the underworld um, since she became an internal, sorry, infernal goddess of death and queen of the underworld, that's why she took the name. Even though her initial arrival in the underworld was tragic and problematic, Persephone made her place her own, becoming the true queen of the underworld, while simultaneously returning um, as goddess of spring. I mean, why can't you be goddess of spring and goddess of the underworld? Persephone took the role of infernal goddess and death wholeheartedly, becoming known as the dread goddess and often being more respected and feared than her husband. So she spent part of the year with her mother Dementa on earth and the rest of the underworld with her husband. When Persephone was with Dementa, the earth thrived and the plants grew, so spring and summer. When she was with her husband, the crops withered and were covered by frost. So you can imagine it's starting to become like harvest and stuff where you get rid of all the fruit and then you start to get to winter before you start planting again. 
So when she was with her husband, the crops were withered and were covered in frost. She therefore became associated with both spring and growth and the process of the earth repeating itself in hibernation over the winter months. While Persephone and Hades didn't have any children, though some sources say they were parents of the Furies, Persephone did have one child by her father, Zeus. So again, it basically became um, a case where Zeus pretended to be Hades because he had this attraction towards her, obviously, because it's his daughter. And... Um, because of that, it created a child, which wasn't really Hades's, but it became sort of Hades's child. So the child that she had is called Zagreus. I actually think I said that right for the first time. So um, he's a divine child who was the son of Zeus as a snake and his daughter Persephone. Zeus intended to make him his heir and bestow him to unlimited power. But Zeus, out of jealousy, urged the Titans to attack the child um, while she pretended, um, distracted him by toys. Um... So she also had another child called Melanoon, who um, was by Zeus too. So because Stephanie, it was said to have been this very, very beautiful goddess, so beautiful that every male god or demigod wanted her. Although Dementor, her mother, hid her in a cave, Zeus as a snake and other creatures managed to find the cave and made it inside. Um, it's just a lust thing, I think, when it comes to Zeus. It's just something that he has to do. It's like part of what he wants. Um it's just weird but that's the greek gods and goddesses <laughs> um so yeah so she became queen of the underworld goddess of spring and was in love with hades and the point is he never strayed anywhere and neither did she although there was um an inflection with um somebody and hera but i believe it was more of just like a crush but yeah they were loyal to each other and were very happily married and till this day i believe they still are so let me know in the comment section below what you think about hades what you think about persephone and let me know if you're team hades team persephone what you think and if you haven't read that book read it it's so good it's free webtoon i'll put the link down below so you can check it out and like i said it's so good and it's free and if you like greek mythology you're not losing anything go for it um just remember what i said it's not 100 accurate there are Certain gods and goddesses that do certain things in the book, like Apollo, don't think that is 100% true, okay? The only person I would say that is true in it is Zeus, okay? And this is why I love Hera so much, because after reading that, I've seen more about her. So I'll see you guys soon, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Bye!